Hello, my name is Tridar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Roman cathedral in Minecraft. Let's get started. So here it is, a much requested building the Roman cathedral. The full tutorial series we will be beginning today. It's going to be at least three episodes, I think, maybe, maybe four or five. Because this is an advanced level difficulty build. And it's very detailed. It's got not just a lot of materials, but also a lot of uh, intricate work. You will be needing to build on the interior as well as the exterior here, as you can see. But uh, if we go slow, I think that you will be able to accomplish the building. Uh, but it is going to take you some amount of time, I would think, because as I said, this is an advanced level difficulty build. But even if you don't want to build the building and you just want to watch the video, you may learn a few things about uh, construction techniques that you can use in your own worlds to apply there as well. So let's just take a little walk around the exterior here. Get ourselves acquainted with the building. Of course, in good Roman tradition, it is done in the Corinthian order on the exterior here. And uh, we have a nice big dome on the top there. And uh, some details we have are a little bit more uh, baroque than others, you could say. Uh, most notably, probably, the diagonal uh, eagle statues here at the top. We have four of those. This is the, the same eagle as the tutorial I've already done, except it has been rotated by 45 degrees to fit on uh, this uh, building here, on these little perches on the side there, to just add uh, some uh, little uh, decorative flourishes on the side so the transition between the dome and the lower sections of the roof here are uh, not quite as severe. You have something interesting to look at on both sides there. But of course we do have a very large dome on the top here. And then a cupola on top of that. And then another little dome. And then a little spire. And of course a big golden cross at the top because it is a cathedral. We do have to have one of those on the top there. Uh, but as you can see, you're going to be needing quite a lot of things like cobble, diorite, cut copper, uh, gold, and other materials. Uh, there's a materials list over there. We will go over that uh, momentarily. But let's land and take another closer look at the exterior of the building now that we've got the panorama of it. So out front here, we of course have a large six-column Corinthian portico. Right there with the triangular roof and everything, a good, uh, a good sturdy Roman feature. And we have two more of those on either side flanking the main one in the center there with the uh, entrance doorway. In the middle here, we do have some angelic statues as well with their uh, wings back there and their arms lifted up in praise and everything. A little glowstone halo on top there as well for a little extra detail. Of course, uh, this statue here does have its own tutorial. Uh, these are going to be optional, I think. If you don't want to build them in your structure, you can just leave out the base and the statue and everything. But I will leave that for you to determine later on. I imagine everyone is going to be building this building slightly differently uh, than everyone else. Uh, but behind there, we, of course, do have some stained glass windows. Uh, I've gone with just all light blue stained glass on this one. Uh, but for your building, if you would prefer another color or you want to mix and match, say, uh, perhaps uh, blue, uh, uh, what, light blue, regular blue, uh, cyan, and purple. Some of my favorite stained glass colors to mix and match. Perhaps a little red here and there might work too. Uh, on the sides here, we do have a couple more smaller statues. Right there, another uh, portico on the side here and of course you can view this building from pretty much any angle it's designed to look interesting from a number of vantage points as we go along here and of course the the front is the same as the back and of course the other side is the same as that one because this building as we go will have four-way symmetry meaning except for the cross up there at the top if we split the building it will um over here, I can show you on the foundation. If we, if we split the building into uh, 
four quadrants, as you can see here. Uh, this quadrant here will be the same as this one over here. It's just mirrored on the other side of the red line, and the whole thing is also mirrored on the other side of that red line there. It's going down the center of the building, like so. But uh, as we go, that's going to make things uh, perhaps less daunting because all you have to do is get one quarter of the building right, and then you just have to build it three more times to get the rest of the structure. So as we go later on in the tutorial, I will be focusing in on a quadrant of the building and showing you that in extreme detail. Hopefully enough that you will be able to replicate the structure uh, because it is very large, so it is going to be quite, quite a long series, I think. Three, four, five episodes. Uh, but I think we spent enough time down here, so let's go on to the next level. So after we get uh, past the Corinthian order down here, we then need to put another order here. And uh, this, this level is mostly meant to hide the interior features. Uh, because, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, because the interior of the building is done up like the Hagia Sophia. Because people have been asking me for a Roman... Uh, cathedral and also for the Hagia Sophia. So we are uh, doing both of those in this building here. And uh, you'll, you'll see when we go inside here in a minute. But the exterior is done in this way because while I, I really love the interior of the Hagia Sophia, um, the exterior is, uh, to put it kindly, a disaster. Uh, not only because it's really old and suffered from a lot of reconstructions and everything over the years, but but also... Uh, because, um, I mean, it's it's a very exemplary building for Ro for how the Romans did their design because they would always spend all their money on the interior and not so much on the exterior. They just put a bit of stone cladding on the front wherever the um, uh, main entrance was. But uh, this building here is more of a, um, is, is more Greek also because it uh, it has an exquisite exterior as well. So it's, it's a bit Greek and... Uh, also a bit baroque in that sense as well. So we are doing a bit of a fusion of several thousand years of architectural history in this particular building here. So uh, once that is done, we have a little uh, flat part over here. I tried a number of ways to roof off uh, the area for this particular section. You'll see when we go inside why we needed that. Later on, we do have our main dome here, which, as you can see through the glass, it is quite larger than the dome that is inside. And uh, that is because we have taken a page out of uh, Sir Christopher Wren's School of Cathedral Building with St. Paul's in London, and we have detached the exterior from the interior so we can have the best of both worlds. We can build something nice on the outside, but we can also build uh, what we want on the inside as well, and just have a bit of filler space in between, which will let us have uh, the building that we want to have. All right, so I think we have looked at the exterior enough. So it is time to go inside and see the real uh, centerpiece jewel of the building, which is, of course, the interior. So here we are on the inside of the interior. As you can see, this is uh, very closely modeled on the Hagia Sophia. I have only made some material substitutions. The basic structure of the building is the same. As you can see here, we have a central dome supported on four arches, also supported on four pendentives. That's what these triangular sections here are called, by the way. These are called pendentives. Take a closer look at that there. And we have, we pushed out the wall just a little bit over here to get a very small uh, barrel vault underneath the arch over here on the side. And of course, in this space, we have put a, a very large uh, diamond imperial Roman eagle right there. And we have another one on the other side over here as well. Uh, going to be quite expensive, but when we go through the materials list, I will recommend you some su uh, substitutions for this if you don't want to uh, uh, spend quite that much. On some sculptural details, you can also leave them out if you want to as well. Those are going to be optional. Uh, but as you can see up here, we do have quite a lot of gold ore we're going to be using in the building, as well as quite a lot of lapis and uh, calcite as well. Uh, but on the ends here, we of course have the, the famous uh, double half domes 
on the side here that the Hagia Sophia has, with also uh, three smaller half domes scalloped into the edge of the larger half dome on the, the side here. So if we stand, I think, somewhere around over here and take a look up, we can see that we have just a little half dome, another little half dome, and a large dome up there. We have large spaces spinning into ever smaller spaces, sort of, uh, sort of like enfolding you in the building. When you, when you take a look at it from uh, various vantage points, it all looks very different from wherever you take a look at it at. But, uh, as I said, it's uh, one of my favorite buildings, but for Minecraft, for this model here, we did have to redesign a few elements. Uh, because there should be more columns on the top here, and uh, these columns here should be larger. But because of the, the various orders uh, that uh, we have to work with in Minecraft, we don't have the correct, uh, how shall I say, we, we don't have the correct um, scale factor done between these. Like, normally we would do this to 1 to 0.6 so we could get the, the golden phi ratio in the building. Uh, but also the Hagia Sophia is based off of a, a more subtle 1 to like 1.16 ratio as well. It's extremely subtle. It took them a long time to figure that out. Uh, but it's one of the many mathematical tricks that have been played in this building. Like if you see the, the golden ring here on the edge there, if we take a look there, we can see that that is meant to edge out just the top of the arch here under the dome. So it looks like even though the domes on the sides are larger than that one at the top there, the perspective has been corrected by this line here. So it looks like that uh, they are still the same size. Very subtle uh, optical illusion going on in the building. Not many people pick up on that, so I wanted to point it out to you. Uh, but as you can see here, we do have a nice glass floor inside the building. If you're going to be building this on survival, this will stop things from spawning. We also have a bit of glowstone and gold under there for a pattern as well to help uh, light up the building. So you can walk around in, in here and you don't have to have uh, torches just festooned everywhere on the building. If you also have shaders or equivalent in uh, bedrock perhaps, if you have uh, RTX or whatever, uh, you can have a, a nice effect going on on the floor here as well. The whole building can be very translucently mirrored in the floor. One of my favorite features. Uh, I've taken to putting uh, glass floors in a lot of my more ornate buildings, uh, when, when applicable anyway. Uh, but I think, it's, uh, I think it's most fitting for this particular one here. So let's take a look around at the um, edges of the interior. So if we go back here under the entrance vestibule, of course we have uh, the main door over here or over there. These are There are only two doors in, into the cathedral, that one there. If you want to add some more, you can do that. Uh, but under here we do have, of course, our uh, columns performing a very uh, structural role of holding everything up. Uh, because of the height of the floors, there was not enough room to put arches in here and some groin vaults, otherwise I would have added that. So we had to make some uh, some concessions to Minecraft. We have a little uh, passageway here, which goes off to the side here. I did try to put a suggestion of a groin vault up there with the, the uh, pattern of the gold. Of course we have our rooms over here. I've tried to fit as many uh, windows in the building as is possible to do, but because we have, um, I tried to fit the exterior very tightly to the interior, but in some places uh, it, there's uh, a bigger gap to fill than in others. If we just continue walking around here, we can see that we come to another space on the other side here, just a mirror image of the one we saw before, the hallways, it's the same. And of course, uh, this hallway is stuck in the bottom of the four piers right here, which are structural elements that hold up these arches, like so. And the forces get uh, transferred to the ground through those arches uh, there. Pretty neat. Uh, but if we want to go back over here, we can take the stairwell to the second level. 
course, I have de uh, designed these to fit here. I think uh, I think they're in different places than the actual uh, Hagia Sophia. They're they're more on the exterior in some places, but I didn't really like how they were, so I, I redesigned those just a little bit. If we go up to the second level, we have a change in the floor. We didn't have enough room to put a double layer floor with the glass, uh, but we just put a random pattern of blue and black uh, glazed terracotta up here. I want to say stained for a minute, but no, these, these are the glazed blocks. Very good for Roman mosaics. Uh, that's also why I use the, the, the uh, nether quartz and the gold ore and everything. It's kind of like a gold inlaid mosaics and imperial porphyry marble with the nether quartz. Uh, e even, e even the new nether quartz will look good enough uh, for this, although in my texture pack I do prefer to have the older models. They just, they just look better to me. Here we have the top gallery. Uh, now, fun fact, over up, up here, this is where the emperor in uh, Constantinople, in, in the actual Hagia Sophia, his box to sit up here, well, I guess, uh, I guess right here, and observe uh, the uh, processions and uh, liturgies and whatnot going on uh, down in the cathedral floor. The whole thing would be filled with uh, chants and uh, smell of incense and oil lamps and everything. Probably look quite pretty. Uh, but if we continue around, of course, as I said, it has four-way symmetry, so there will be four stairwells that will take you up and down. So let's go up to the next level here. Just a simple switchback stairs. And up here we have uh, some hidden areas because, as I've said, we have disconnected the exterior from the interior, so we have uh, a lot of space on the interior here to play with, and I didn't want to leave that just filled straight with cobble. Uh, in some areas we did that, uh, but I wanted to fill it with uh, perhaps some useful spaces here and there. There's an, another stairwell. We have uh, a little door here under under these stairs. There, uh, but we want to go around here on this long hallway. And stop off at uh, this court's door here, which will take us up to this third level, right by the dome and our big diamond eagles up here as well. Right there, just um, there's just a little bit more space underneath here for you to use. Uh, for for whatever you want, as I said, the the um, uh, eagles up there are going to be optional. Yeah, you can not build them or build them as something else. As we go, your choice. But if we go up again, we come up to this level here, which we looked at the uh, uh, tertiary layer with the glass windows and everything above the Corinthian order down there, like so. And I did my best to fill this out with uh, a decent looking room. Well, we transitioned from all of the stone and everything to just having some uh, cheaper materials, some wood in here, pretty much. We have a nice little parquet floor. And everything there. And over here, there's another little passageway, which will lead to an equivalent level on the other side of the building. Uh, there is also another little detail I want to show you here with this door. If we go through here, we start crawling through ladders and cobblestone again, which will take us up to the level where the dome is going to be. So let's go up through here. There are going to be two of these little access ladders, and this takes you to the uh, interior of the dome. And uh, so you can see everything. Let's just have a little potion here for a moment. So down below this here, this is the dome that we took a look at from below. And up here, this is the much larger exterior dome. Uh, and if we were going to be building this in real life, for structural reasons on this ring around here that's currently empty, we would need to build a third conical dome, just like a conical shape, that would uh, support this point up here and transfer that force to the ring around here and to the arches below there. So the uh, cupola at the top would be structurally stable. So the whole thing wouldn't collapse. That uh, That is what was done in St. Paul's Cathedral in London. 
Uh, but because this is Minecraft, I elected to dispense with that particular feature in this building model here. Uh, because it's just a whole lot more cobblestone. And I thought you might actually want to use that, uh, that room up there for something. If you want to, you can come up with, uh, with, with just whatever use of that you want to have. Uh, so, I think that pretty much wraps up the interior tour of the building. Uh, let's go outside now because there are some slices of the building I want to show you to illustrate some things that I just said uh, somewhat better than um, how you might have been able to see them. So, over here, here is the entire building sliced in twain down the long axis. As you can see on the interior here, we of course have the familiar model of the Hagia Sophia right there, but wrapped along the exterior, uh, we have of course a nice elegant Roman facade wrapped around the entire structure. Right there, as you can see, the exterior dome is quite a lot bigger than the one on the interior, and that is because I wanted to, um, we needed to have an impressive dome on the outside that was in scale to the exterior that we wrapped around our interior there. So our proportions are uh, somewhat off between those two, but uh, that, that doesn't matter because in general you would never crawl up in here and notice that. Uh, but as I said down here, it, well, if we were building this in reality, we would need a third conical dome that started down here, followed roughly that shape to support the cupola up there at the top and come down that way there, just a big cone of brick or something that would support uh, the weight of that at the top and transfer it onto those arches directly below there. And then the exterior dome with the columns and um, uh, everything you see there, this would only have to support itself. Pretty neat, uh, but in, in that way we do have to little, be a little bit cheaty with uh, how we approach some elements of the building. Uh, we can see here the reason for the tertiary layer with all the windows and everything. And uh, that is because that was done to hide the uh, half domes on the side here. Like so. And uh, a lot of that is filled in with cobble. Uh, but as you see, I have reclaimed some of the space in here for you to use for just, you know, whatever you want to. If you want to build your base in there, you do have some space in the attics of the cathedral that you could use uh, for that purpose. So, let me go over here. Remember, as I said, we can chop the building into quarters. And here, indeed, is a quarter of the building. And uh, this is really all I designed of the building. Because it was just designed to be uh, copied and pasted and mirrored and rotated to get the other three sections there. And let's just take a look at this in, in detail here. So as we go, I know the building looks really large, but if you can build one of these quadrants, you can, all you have to do is build it three more times and you will have the entire building. So perhaps it's a, it's a little bit less daunting when you think of it in those terms. Like so. You can see all our little layers and everything that you will have to crawl around inside of it. I try and make my buildings fun like that to give you give you little uh, nooks and crannies that you can crawl around in. Uh, speaking of, there is also a little space up here at the top if you want to put a uh, put a, perhaps a cobblestone pillar with a ladder. You can also come up here and access the cupola. So you will have just just a little a little space up here for you to do uh, something with. Uh, but that's the last of the usable uh, usable space because after that is the top of the dome on the thing there, and then uh, uh, the spire and the uh, big cross at the top. All right, so very big building, very complex, uh, but I do hope you like the design. I've been working on, I built several models of these over probably the past eight years, I think, and uh, this is currently my best one. That's probably going to be the final one. Uh, 
But uh, you could say this is the result of uh, many, many, uh, well, not many, I suppose, what, three, three or four versions, previous versions I've done of this building. Uh, but I think this is the, uh, uh, the most well done in its fine details. So I am now presenting it to you here today as a tutorial. So I hope you're going to like it. Uh, now, as you can see, we have uh, quite an expansive list of materials to work through. Instead of just flashing these on the screen with numbers and everything, I need to walk you through these because some of these will require a little bit of uh, explanation. Uh, so the first off, you will need uh, 154,597 blocks of cobble. Now wait, please don't stop watching the video. Let, let me explain that number. So this number here is a worst case scenario, meaning that in the reference model here, you will, you will not need more than the amount I show you here, but if you build some areas hollow and are a little bit more economical with your materials, you can get away with less. Like for instance over here, if you don't fill this area in solid with cobble or that one over there or portions of the dome and also a bit of the foundation down here, I think you can get away with half this amount of cobble. I mean, that, that's still like, you know what? 75,000 cobblestone, um, but uh, it, it should save you just a little bit. Uh, however, for the diorite, I think you're going to need at least 20,000. But the worst case scenario is that you will need uh, 24,520 blocks of diorite. Uh, the calcite, though, you're going to need all this. You'll need uh, 2,962 blocks of calcite. Uh, for the wood, now the wood is uh, almost exclusively used in these little side rooms I showed you here. So if you want to leave that hollow and just not build those rooms at all either to save you some more materials, you don't need any wood for this building. I, I haven't listed the, t the type of wood here because I figure perhaps um, uh, you might want to mix and match various types of wood and come up with your own design. Uh, but if you do, you will need uh, 2,978 wood planks for those. Uh, for the roof, uh, you will need quite a lot of cut copper. Uh, fully oxidized, staged four. Uh, you will need uh, 2,056 uh, blocks and 2,118 slabs, like you see done here. Um, conversely, if you like a different shade of copper, like one of the uh, one of the first three shades, you can convert that as well. I think the green works best for the cathedral building here. Uh, but if you want to have like you know uh, waxed uh, what uh, wax stage one cut copper, that would look uh, quite shiny as well. Um, you will need almost all of the gold ore here. We use quite a lot of that on the interior. You will need seven thousand two hundred and sixty nine blocks of gold ore. Uh, and by the way, the entire materials list, I will copy and paste this in the video description. So if you just want it at a glance as well, it will be there for you. Um, for the optional wood, you will need 7,170 tree trunks, whichever type you want. Uh, you will definitely need all of this lapis. You will need 3,736 blocks of lapis, 971 blocks of gold, and primarily for the uh, sculptural eagle statues on the interior there, if you want to build those, uh, optional, you will need 124 blocks of deep slate diamond ore and 168 diamond blocks. Um, also, conversely, if you perhaps want to use some other cheaper material that's not diamonds, therefore that you could perhaps substitute that with um, perhaps emerald blocks and uh, emerald ore would look nice. I would try to use a somewhat rare material for those, uh, but you can also just make them gold or not build them as well. Uh, you also need 3,495 blocks of obsidian, or if you don't want to farm that much obsidian, you can use uh, any version of blackstone. Perhaps polished blackstone would look nice. Uh, tons of torches if you're going to be building this in survival. 2,142 cobblestone slabs, 654 stone brick slabs, 130 quartz slabs, 168 wooden stairs, your choice, 48 ladders, 4,164 cobblestone stairs, 863 blocks of glowstone. For all the windows, you will need 5,877 blocks of light blue stained glass, or uh, if you want to mix and match the colors, 
you can divide this number by whichever color palette of stained glass you want to use. Uh, like if you wanted to use perhaps four colors of stained glass, you can just divide this by four and uh, separate that out between them. You will need, need to do all, uh, that also for the panes here. And for this, you will need uh, 1,756 light blue stained glass panes, 336 chiseled stone bricks, not load stones, it's just my texture pack here, uh, chiseled stone bricks for some details on the exterior. For the structure of the building, though, you will need all 11,000 132 stone bricks, uh, 7,546 stone brick stairs, all of those, 100, um, no, wait, 1,094 wood slabs, the wood's optional, as I said. Uh, not optional, though, is the cobblestone wall, 724. For the interior details, 1,646 uh, nether quartz or blocks. For the interior, also 4,508 blocks of chiseled quartz. I hope you have a villager trading hall for that. Uh, 1,966 pillar quartz blocks, 2,946 quartz stairs. And uh, also for the roof on the exterior, you will need 4,884 blocks of dark prismarine. Uh, however, you can also, if you want to make the, the roof solid copper, you can just add this to your, your copper total. Uh, but I think it might be easier to get uh, the prismarine instead of the copper. Uh, so on the interior, for all the various doors, you will need 22 dark oak doors. And for the, um, for the floors on the second and third level, you will need, uh, respectively, each uh, 1,164 blocks of blue glazed terracotta and black glazed terracotta. All right, so uh, that was a mouthful. Big long materials list as you can see here. To be expected though because of the building that we have to work with. Uh, but now that we have the tour and the materials list out of the way, I think for the remaining time today, we will start talking about the foundation of the building. Alright, so if you actually want to build this after, after my complex explanation there, uh, the dimensions of the building are as follows. It is 135 blocks long across the front, 89 blocks long back that way, and 161 blocks tall from the bottom down here all the way up to the top of the, the cross up there. So it should fit in any standard Minecraft world you have, especially with uh, the new increased height generation. You won't have a problem with that. Uh, now, uh, the first thing you should do is mark out a big, big rectangle of 135 by 89. I suggest you count this three times, since it is uh, indeed very literally foundational to the building. You want to have this number exactly right. So before you come to me in a comment saying, uh, my, my numbers didn't work out, please double check your numbering on this. And... Uh, uh, on top or um, uh, in place of the rectangle that you just built, you want to do that out of cobblestone stairs. And you want to have that all the way around the building. Going back that way and back here. So let's just go take a look at that. You can see we've, we've got cobblestone stairs. The uh, numbers I just gave you, that is on the edge of the cobblestone stairs here. It's not back here. It's not right here. It is right here on top of the stairs. All right, once you have done that, uh, you can dispense with a lot of the cobble filling on the interior in there. Uh, if you want to, you can mark out uh, center lines for those as well. We will count out the numbers for those momentarily. But you can see here, we do have a number of diorite indentations. And these are where the bases of these statues are going to be sitting, on the sides and along the front. All right, so let's take a look at that there, and let's do some counting. Uh, now, all the way around the building, without exception, you want to have a two-block-wide layer of diorite in a big rectangle right behind these cobblestone stairs all the way around the building, okay? All right, now once you have done that, we are going 
two, uh, we're going to start placing some stairs. And uh, these are going to be just uh, full block stairs here, except in the front. Of course, we have our standard three stairs here. This is a Greek detail. Uh, these are called uh, the two bottom ones down here. We, we, of course, have the stereo bait. And up here at the top, we have the top layer called the stylo bait. That's just a detail from the old-timey Greek temples that I've included at the bottom there along the uh, foundations of the building. So we can have it uh, all rooted in the ancient past. Uh, over here, um, I think I should probably explain... Um, the tutorial is formatted in the following way. What I will be showing you here is a slice by slice of the entire building uh, all the way as we go. For the first several layers, we're going to be going up one block at a time. Right here, you can see there is only a difference of one block between this layer and this layer. Uh, but in subsequent layers, except for like two layers where I made a mistake, we are going to be going up two blocks at a time. So the entire building has been copied and pasted and sliced from the top down. And we will be building this in two block uh, module layers as we go. Uh, because while I am capable of uh, doing quasi block by block tutorials, this building is far, far too big for me to attempt to do that. To give you any kind of tutorial at all, um, things have to be more simplified than that. So, we will be uh, slicing the building up in the following way, and I will be going through very slowly and showing you all the blocks you need to place, but pre-placed, in the positions they need to, to be in. And I will be giving you verbal instruction as we go along the way for that. Alright, so with uh, that out of the way, we need to do some block counting. So you can get everything correct. So from this point, uh, from this point here, uh, let's count to the center line, I think, uh, approximately where that should be. Now let's actually go back over here because I've already drawn the center lines. It may be easier. Uh, but where I'm going to be placing these uh, stone slabs, uh, you, should, you should be placing cobble. Uh, but I like to use these slabs here because they have a nice texture so you can uh, more easily count them if you need to double check me. So starting from this point here, we want to place one, two, three. Thirty one blocks. Show you that there. Then we want to turn the corner and count for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. And then we want to place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve blocks. And then we want to turn around again and place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. And then from here we want to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Twenty-one blocks. And on the twenty-second block, right here, this will be your center line. Right there. So let me show you this from the top down in case you want to count the blocks to double check me for that there. And uh, I would suggest if you can to keep these lines in place on the early stages of the building so you can make sure that everything is correct. If you do everything right at this phase here with all the counting, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, uh, but I always like to keep a line of symmetry in my buildings when possible. Uh, so from the edge back over here where we started, we want to count one, two, three. Sixteen blocks. From here, then we want to count one, two, three, seven blocks. 
And then one, two, three. Ten blocks. Turn the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. And then from here, one, two, three, four, five. Fourteen blocks. And on the fifteenth block right here, this will be the center line along the long axis of the building. We have a center line along the front axis of the building, along the short end here. And on the long end here, we have, we have of course, another line of symmetry going down that way. And this here divides the entire building into the four quadrants that I showed you. Remember, over there I showed you a quadrant of the building. So all you have to do is what you build over here, you then want to mirror that on the other side of that center line right there. And once you have done that, you want to mirror all of that again on this section on the right over here as well. Uh, and all, all of that cobble down there, you can leave that out to save you some of your, your bill on uh, materials for that. So once you have done that, um, you should have something, something vaguely resembling this here. Uh, you don't have to have the cobblestone filling in the middle for this level either. Uh, so now we need to talk about the basis for the statues. And all you have to do, these are very simple. Just uh, put a slab of uh, stone bricks with two blocks clearance all the way around like so. And do that uh, four more times there. On the side over here, you want to do the same. Uh, the, the infiller material here doesn't matter. Uh, you, you can forget about that. It's not going to be seen. So you can just uh, do a big uh, square of cobble here. But the clearance for this one is only one block on the sides there. But it is two blocks on the back there. All right, and uh, at the front as well, we can also place in our stairs. Uh, so I'm going to have to dead reckon this. I think, I think that that is probably the center line. So we want to count out the 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 length of these stairs here. Well, let's count from the corner here. It's going to it's going to be one, two, three. Thirteen blocks, and then the length of the stairs is going to be, uh, what? One, two, three. Uh, nine, and then on the tenth block, you should hit the center line, unless I miscounted. So one, two, three. Oh, looks like I got it bang on there. So we have nine blocks. On the tenth block is your center line, and then nine blocks that way. And uh, that's going to be our stairs for the front portico. It's, of course, the same on the other end here. Or those cobblestone stairs right there. All right. Uh, let's go on to the next level of the foundation. I want to get you started on the foundation of the building today. Uh, however, I think um, I think I'm gonna probably have to cut it there because of uh, how long the video has gone on. I think already, uh, and on the next parts, we will probably start on the structure of the building itself. Uh, so next level is going to be really easy. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's somewhat more easy. Uh, so back here where we did this level of the stereo baits, we need to do the next level. So we can have both of the stereo bait steps right there. And then to do that, all you want to do is go around and cut one block back all the way around here. You see how there is a, a one block space here for these? Like so. You just want to follow the pattern that you did for the first level. And for the second level, go around with cobblestone. And uh, cut in some steps and make the, indent the indentations for those all the way around the building according to the pattern that you see here. We'll come back and talk about 
the the uh, platforms in a minute. Now over here, we of course have the next level of our stairs. These just go straight back, like that there, on both sides as well. And uh, as you can see here, we're also going to be talking about the floor momentarily. If you remember, we're going to be putting a sheet of glass on that floor, so this is still not not quite uh, the floor level. Uh, around the front here, you can come around and put um, cobblestone stairs just all the way around. On the interior here, you can you can leave that uh, empty probably. Uh, and over here for this one, you just want to put a straight level of uh, full cobblestone blocks, and you can leave out that diorite right in the middle. All right, so let's get a bird's eye view here of the entire floor design. Now, something about the floor here that um, you will notice the building, the lines of symmetry are done on one block wide sections, but the floor pattern is a four by four. So that means that this floor pattern will not meet at a point in the middle. So I just want to make you aware of that. So if you start thinking that you're getting off because of the floor pattern on the edges, I want you to completely ignore that because this is just sitting below the glass over here. I'll just uh, quickly go on to the next phase over here. As you can see, it's sitting directly below the glass, but if you'll notice in the middle here between the columns here, it's, it's offset by one block. And uh, because all you're doing is walking on this, you're never really seeing it from the top down in most uh, views of the cathedral there, that uh, I didn't think it was necessary to um, get a different pattern, because I quite like this one, because of it, it works really well with the interplay of the glowstone and the gold ore to give us just the right amount of illumination on the floor, which is uh, why I did that. And uh, over here as well, before we get to it, we're going to be taking a look probably at uh, these things. We'll start off with this in the um, part two probably. But I will just give you a quick view of this here. This is the... Um, uh, this over here is the same. I've just removed the glass on this one on this particular phase so it can be seen in a bit more detail. Uh, but for the purposes of getting started, I mean, you already know you need to form a massive amount of materials for this building. And uh, just getting started on the foundation is going to take a while. So by the time I get the next parts out, I think that uh, you will probably still be working on that. Um... We need to now cite the dimensions for the floor. And uh, the, the floor, by the way, this is a very simple repeating pattern. It has only two elements. And uh, let me try and zoom in on that here. So you see on the right we have a square of diorite and then a square of gold in the middle of that. That is one module. On the left we have a ring of uh, gold ore with uh, four blocks of glowstone in the corners and diorite in the middle of that. So you can see what we have here is just a simple uh, square floor pattern, but it uh, it is uh, alternating and repeating. So um, uh, you don't, in other words, if you built a square of diorite, you would not have a square of diorite next to it. You would have the one with the gold ore. And conversely, you would not then have gold ore. You would then have the one with the diorite and then the one with the gold ore, like you see done here. Just a little a simple checkerboard pattern of this here, but you will want to be repeating this as a repeating pattern quite a lot of times all the way through the floor of the building, like so. And you may be able to save some gold ore on this uh, later on because as you can see some of the elements of the building are just sitting directly on this and, uh, and, I, and I haven't bothered to go back and optimize the materials to uh, account for that. Um, so, I think the best way to figure out where this is going to be is just to count a diagonal. So from this point right here, which is going to be in a diagonal, if we take, uh, if, we, if, we, if where we had our original red uh, redstone block down there to start with, if we take a diagonal and count for one, two, three, and then four, we will come to this point here and keep counting for 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, thir nope, 13, 14, 15, 6, 16, and 17. So if you count a diagonal of 17 all the way from the corner there, this will take you to this point here. And we have just a little bit of the pattern that's, uh, that's chopped off on the edges down here. Uh, but uh, but uh, th this section here contains the modules that I just described to you for the floor patterns. I think, uh, I think this is also covered in my Roman Road tutorial if you want to go back and take a look at that. Uh, but you will want to start with, uh, well, it, it actually doesn't really matter where you start with this pattern. As I said, because it's very subtle and it's below the glass, so you're, you're barely going to notice that it's, that it's uh, there. But on the side here, if you want to, you can start with that and then just start repeating it in a really big rectangle around the building there. And to get some more measurements, this is going to be roughly a distance from if we take uh, if we take a center line off of this platform here and count back for one, two, three, four, five, six blocks there. That's going to be the cobblestone that's going to be surrounding that. And on the edges here, I think it is also going to be another six. Uh, nope, I'm wrong. It's seven. Yep, definitely seven. Seven right there for that one. So that will help you cite that properly. And, and remember, as I said, this is one quadrant. So these measurements here are the same bounding measurements that will be on that corner there, that corner there, and that corner there. Uh, if you overbuild this pattern, don't worry. You can, when we go on to this next phase over here in, in part two, uh, you can reclaim some of the materials and just fill them in with cobblestone or something. Uh, because as you can see, in this next level, we are building the stylo bait level, the third level up here, remember? This is, uh, this, is our, this is our stylo bait level. We built our stereo baits already down here. This will be our stylo bait level, which will serve as the, uh, the bottom floor level for the entire cathedral. Because as you can see, we can walk on the glass at this level here. So that is going to be the floor level for the entire cathedral itself. Well, we'll have to take a look at all that next time. I hope you have enjoyed the cathedral tutorial so far. It's going to be quite a big build, very complicated, and not for the faint of heart. But if you do want to tackle the building, I'm going to try to show you everything that you're going to need to replicate the building uh, exactly as shown. But also, this entire world here will be available in the video description for both Java and Bedrock Editions. So you can come here and take a look at all of these phases for yourself if you need more help than the video itself can provide alone. Also, if you just want to take a copy of the, the building back there as well as a schematic for world edit or something, just paste it in your world and you really don't want to build the thing, uh, you, can, you can do that as well. And, and I wouldn't blame you. I have done that uh, a couple of times myself. So I want to thank you very, very much for watching. And I will see you next time.